commit, as I said, pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Law of 1975. This is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2022 to the news record and star ledger in December 2021, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams. Ms. Croyt. Here. Mr. DeLuca. Here. Mr. McGeehee. Here. Mayor Daffis. Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires all means of public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the governing body has a discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas the desire of the governing body to comply with the provisions of the act, same time it conducts its business in an orderly and expeditious manner, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood, does hereby prohibit except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observations of the action and discussion of the governing body at all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams. Ms. Kreit. Yes. Mr. DeLuca. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. Mayor Davis. Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk Fritzen. Please join us in salute to our flag. Pledge allegiance Pledge flag. to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Welcome, friends and neighbors, to our December 6th Township Committee meeting. Uh, we will start tonight's meeting with our first of two public comment sessions, as we do with every public session. The first public comment session is only for agenda items. And after that, we will uh, go into our Board of Health meeting, chaired by committee member McGeehee. Uh, that will then bring us to one ordinance on final passage this evening, followed by an introduction of seven new ordinances. I don't remember the last time I saw seven ordinances. We are definitely very, very busy here. Then we will have a first of two public hearings um, about the Essex County Community Block Grant Program opportunity. Um, and, and, and specifically the purchase of an ADA compliant senior bus. And that hearing will be conducted and we will hear uh, a presentation by Community Development Director Annette De Palma. Uh, report from departments. There is a November 2022 budget report. I will also be reporting on the budget in my report as mayor. Uh, that will lead us into administrative reports. We will hear first from Interim Administrator Schuster, followed by Assistant Administrator Barnett. Then we will hear from our Township Attorney, Mr. Desiderio, and then from Madam Clerk Fritzen. Reports from elected officials tonight. We do not have Committee Member Adams with us due to a work conflict in Summit. Actually, at the moment, Committee Member Adams is making a presentation at the summit township committee meeting as we conduct our township committee meeting. We will hear therefore first from committee member McGeehee followed by deputy mayor DeLuca followed by committee member Kripe and I always go last. Discussion items, one item tonight, a uh, very quick item. And then we have our consent agenda to adopt as previously posted and published. That will bring us to our second public comment period. Any agenda item, any item, any subject matter, uh, rather, and then we will adjourn. And hopefully we'll get to all of this before 9.30. So with that, uh, let's get on with it this evening. I think um, we should acknowledge that we lost um, uh, an important member of our community. And I ask that we all join together in a moment of silence for Dennis, Prznowski, 
who uh, is a retired township employee, Department of Works, uh, excuse me, Department of Public Works employee, and a longtime resident of Maplewood. So please join me in um, a moment of silence in his honor. Thank you. We wish the Prznowski family um, strength and our prayers and hearts go to them. And may uh, Dennis's memory be a blessing during this very difficult time for the family. Okay, this brings us to our first public comment. Again, for agenda items only, I see that we have our county liaison with us. Ms. Valentina Richardson, uh, out of courtesy, I will offer Ms. Richardson the opportunity to address the committee. Welcome, Ms. Richardson. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Good evening. Uh, a couple of items to talk about. Uh, right now, the county executive and all of his uh, heads are working diligently on the budget. We, we all know about this 24% increase with the health benefits as well as with the pension. So he, he's coming up with tremendous creative ways to try to work it out, but it is a very difficult situation as all of you are aware. Uh, with that being said, we are still having our emergency food distribution for the holiday. It's going to be scheduled for December 20th. That's a Tuesday beginning at 9 a.m. at the Cody Arena. That's 560 Northville Avenue in West Orange. They'll be giving out uh, turkeys and other items, but They'll be given out as long as the supplies are there. So it's about a thousand turkeys and holiday dinner boxes to be distributed. And it, the event will be held rain or shine. Uh, the next item that is currently going on is our holiday light celebration at Turtleback Zoo, beginning on the 9th, running through December 31st. It'll be running from five to nine. If everybody gets a chance to go out to see the, the wonderful holiday display, it's just a good it's just a good time to go out and enjoy time with family and friends during this very difficult time. So if you get an opportunity to go out there, please enjoy and enjoy all the festivities. It will be closed on the 24th and the 25th, though, but from the 9th through the 31st, 5 to 9, it will be open. Uh, the next item that continues to be going on is the mobile vaccination. We have uh, uh, several different days. I will uh, go through those items on Monday from two to six. The mobile van will be at the Essex County Hall of Records parking garage. That's 84 West Market Street. On Tuesday from two to six, the mobile van will be at Essex County Wycessing Park, 380 Conger Street in Bloomfield. Wednesday from two to six at the Chris Gatlin Community Center, 291 Union Avenue in Irvington. On Thursday, two to six at the Essex County Turtleback Zoo, the Burnson Education Building, 560 Northville Avenue. Uh, appointments are recommended, but you can drop by. Uh, the Moderna vaccine is also available for ages six years and older, but they are no longer offering the COVID-19 testing. And again, if you have any questions, you can contact uh, EssexCountyCOVID.org or you can give a call to 973 877-8456. Again, that's EssexCOVID.org, or you can give a call to 973-877-8456. And that's it for me. That's a lot. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I've been to the lighting display. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I encourage families out there who haven't witnessed it to go check it out. It's nearby. Uh, and I've also attended the, uh, the massive uh, food giveaway uh, that the county executive conducts at the arena. It is truly a massive undertaking and we're grateful for his efforts every year that he does this. Um, are there any questions for Ms. Richardson from my colleagues? No, I just want to also say thank you for the efforts put in to okay. help our families. I have families no questions either. Ms. Oh, okay. We had a kind of a technical thing there. Ms. Craig, can you repeat that? I was just saying I wanted to extend and also a thank you to the Essex County executives for their efforts in helping our food insecure neighbors. Wonderful. Thank you, indeed. Um, okay. Well, Ms. Richardson, we will make sure to update our website with the information that you shared with us. I know Assistant Administrator Barnett uh, was taking notes, 
and we'll follow up with you as necessary to make sure the information that we publish is accurate and up to date. We ask that you stay with us just through the first public comment period anyway, in case there are members of the public who might have a question for you directly about county services. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Waltz, let's uh, have you take it away, public comment. Good evening, Mayor and Township Committee. We will now begin the first public comment portion of the meeting on agenda items only. If any meeting attendee would like to address the Township Committee, please use the raise your hand function. We will convert you to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Would anybody like to address the Township Committee at this time? Mayor, first we have Claire Roberts. We'll convert you to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Let's see, can you hear me now? And I will try to start the video. Yes, Ms. Roberts, we can hear you, welcome. Okay, thank you very, very much. Um, my questions are really in anticipation of the Board of Health meeting. Um, I don't expect them to be answered specifically in this session, but um, I wanted to have uh, Ms. Davenport know them uh, so that possibly she could address them. Um, my question is regarding the um, choice of animal control provider. And I wanted to know um, if she can tell us who has made final proposals for the animal control contract with Maplewood. And um, if the um, proposals uh, are going to be made public and if so, where will we find them? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. If you stick around just for a few more minutes, You'll hear about that from uh, Health Officer Davenport herself during the Board of Health meeting. She will be addressing that, okay? So thank, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Waltz, any other members of the public who wish to be heard at this time? I see no one there. Okay, we're gonna close the public comment period then for agenda items only and move over to the Board of Health meeting. Please welcome Health Officer Davenport and Committee Member McGeehee, please take over. Thank you, Mayor. I'll uh, start off with the statement. Uh, pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Law, it's 1975. This is the state for the record adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing annual notice regular meetings for 2022 to the news record in Star Ledger, December 2021, and by filing notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams, Ms. Craig. Yeah, here. Mayor Daffis. Here. Mr. DeLuca. Here. Mr. McGeehee. Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all means of public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the Board of Health has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting. And we're desire the Maplewood Board of Health to comply with the provisions act, same time it conducts its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Maplewood Board of Health, Township of Maplewood, does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the Board of Health by the public, and except as otherwise prescribed by law, does limit the public to the observation of the action discussions of the Board of health of all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Ms. Kreit? Here, yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. Luca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. I'll now entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the November 1st, 2022 board. <laughs> move them. Is there second. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Fritzen, please call the Ms. Freit? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Abstain. Thank you. I will now move on to the number, agenda item number five, uh, and that is we'll hear from our health officer, Ms. Davenport. I'll stop sharing my screen and yield the floor for you for your presentation. Ms. Davenport. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you Welcome. so much. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just put my screen mode here. Okay. So um, just wanted to update you that um, among those numerous ordinances are four township ordinances uh, pertaining to the health department. Um, 
their ordinance is uh, 30, 3080 uh, or 3079, 3080, 3081, 3082. Um, this brings us up to a total of five ordinances from the um, health department to update current ordinances and just bring them up to speed uh, to where we are and should be, um, such as you know, updating violations and fee charges, um, adopting state regulations that enable us to enforce and inspect, and um, to just bring us up to speed to um, improve quality of life. For example, um, residential rental properties. Uh, this new amendment to the ordinance would require landlords to provide hot water to tenants at certain times. So um, all of these are just to bring us up to speed to where we need to be um, and enforce and inspect. Um, to the best of our ability. So thank you for that. In terms of resolutions, we have two resolutions that are on the docket for the Township Committee to approve this evening. Uh, one, most of them, both of them are just to approve two grants that we are being awarded to. Uh, one is the uh, Division of Mental Health and Addiction Services Youth Leadership Grant for years two to three. This takes us into 2025. Um, so that's a really good thing. And then we have the Governor's Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse Prevention, which is the Municipal Alliance Grant for 2023 into 2024. Um, so thank you for your review and acceptance of that. As for communicable diseases, just want to update everyone to please get vaccinated for the flu. Uh, we have we are in currently high status um, in um, the state of New Jersey, all across the board. So uh, please get vaccinated to help alleviate the number of respiratory diseases that we are seeing out there um, with COVID, RSV, regular colds, and flu. As for the township of Maplewood going into COVID, we have 133 cases for the month of November. Please note that some of these are um, the cases in the community are probably underreported because we have a lot of um, people using at-home tests. Um, all of these are lab-reported tests. Um, so there are probably more cases of COVID. We also saw an uptick in November after the Thanksgiving holiday. We anticipate that we will see another uptick in the December holiday. Um, but what is really good um, is that while there seem to be a lot of cases, the transmission to other people is low. So um, it's currently, um, you know, you have a lot of cases in the community, but because we are vaccinated, it has stopped the spread and contains it. So can't encourage it enough uh, to get vaccinated and get the booster shot. As you can see, here's the uptick after um, November 26th, um, the holiday. And we are in moderate levels, but there are areas in New Jersey that are um, at high and at low, uh, but there are guidances to provide for um, when we're in community transmission in moderate. Just an emphasis that probably some of the reason, again, why we're seeing a lot of the community transmission is the uh, Omicron subvariants that just keep popping up and spreading to others. So again, vaccination is key because the bivalent uh, vaccine has the Omicron variant. As um, Ms. Richardson Green had mentioned, here are the um, mobile county vaccination sites um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 2 to 6 p.m. at various locations throughout the county, making it accessible for everyone to be able to get their vaccine if needed for free uh, for six years and older. And um, great success for the township. Uh, we offered two free Moderna Omicron booster clinics for adults in Maplewood and offered it up to our neighbors in South Orange too, because as we all know, viruses know no boundaries. So on uh, November 4th, we vaccinated approximately um, 112 people. And then uh, last Saturday, we vaccinated 65 people. So thank you all for coming. Uh, to that great event. We hope to do one another, another one in the um, early months of next year. And we also gave out free uh, COVID test kits. So um, a lot of our residents benefited from that. So hopefully that'll be helpful in the holiday. One thing that I want to emphasize is this email that we received from the state health department saying the importance and reminding pediatricians of catching up children on their recommended vaccines, in particular for those children who are in uh, congregate settings like child cares and schools, want to make sure that they are up to date on all of their required um, and recommended vaccinations. 
so that we can reduce the number of kids who are um, in the healthcare system uh, due to vaccine preventable diseases. So um, if you have any questions about where your child should be under um, their vaccination schedule, the CDC has a great um, schedule that you can type in their date of birth and it gives you all the vaccines that they need. If you have any questions about how to use that, please feel free to call our health department and we're happy to work with you on that. Monkeypox, just wanna uh, emphasize again, another vaccine preventable disease um, is uh, monkeypox. And um, in currently, luckily in New Jersey, we have um, a hold on our cases. They have not been increasing. So we have 760 probable or confirmed monkeypox cases, but just doing our due diligence to remind those that if you fall within the eligible criteria for vaccination, um, please do consider getting a vaccine uh, looking on the state website for those vaccination and testing clinic sites. So those who are eligible um, are those who have had known contact with someone who tested positive for orthopox virus or monkeypox virus within the past 14 days or two weeks. But please note that the state health department and CDC have expanded vaccination eligibility um, to anyone who in the past six months has had um, a new diagnosis of a STD um, or um, has had sex uh, with more than one sex partner um, or has been in an area where there is monkeypox transmission occurring. Uh, there are also people who are health, like for example, in certain occupations like healthcare providers who should get vaccinated as well in just to protect themselves from getting um, exposure if they have to care for someone in the hospital setting. Uh, as we mentioned last month, and we will be reiterating this into uh, the month of January, just so that people can take advantage of the affordable health care uh, coverage registration that is open right now. Just want to emphasize, as um, Mr. DeLuca had shared with me and I shared with all of you last month, but the New Jersey Citizen Action uh, Group is offering free um, guidance on how to enroll both in English and Spanish. Uh, for all residents. So this information is offered to everyone for free. So if you are underinsured or, or uninsured, please take advantage of um, this service. Lastly, under our community resource guide, um, we have updated our community resource guide on our website. Um, it has all new uh, guidances and ser services that we refer to, but if people want to access it, we have a PDF that they can use and refer to easily on their own, and that is also free. Please feel free to spread the word to people that we keep updating this list, but it is pretty comprehensive, um, assisting people with um, services for transportation, um, healthcare providerships, um, and um, public utilities and how to pay for those especially as we go into the winter months, that may be helpful. Lastly, uh, to address animal control, I heard Ms. Roberts, thank you uh, so much for your um, interest in animal control. As um, we are all aware, St. Hubert's is um, terminating their contract with all 19 townships in the state of New Jersey um, as of December 31st. So we are uh, diligently looking and we are currently awaiting uh, one final proposal, um, which we should receive by the end of this week. And we will hopefully get something out to the Township Committee Board of Health to review um, and it'll be proposed um, for the December, for the second meeting in December um, for your review and approval. And that is it, I will stop sharing now. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Ms. Davenport. And to that point, we'll now move on to our agenda, which is our Board of Health discussion. So if any of my colleagues have a question or questions for Ms. Davenport, the floor is now open. I'm seeing head nods. All right. Seeing or nor hearing none, we will now open up uh, the, uh, invite the public to uh, address the Board of Health. Mr. Waltz, anyone would like to address the Board of Health? I see no takers, Mr. McGee. Oh, I just got a hand up, my apologies, uh, a few. Um, Mr. McGee, first up, I have just two letters, I apologize. Uh, ZG, we will convert you over to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Waltz, and hello, uh, ZG. 
ZG, the floor is open for you. You're muted. McGee, can we stop sharing for a moment? Sure, that's my pleasure. I'm I'm here. Can you All hear right. Me? Good evening, Ms. Ms. Uh, ZG. Uh, the floor is yours. It's actually Ms. Bailey. Sorry. Lynn Bailey. Oh well, it said ZG. So yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's that's my husband. Pleasure to um, meet you, Ms. Bailey. You have hello, a... hello, Township Committee. I. Uh, I too am a member of Soma for Animals along with uh, Claire Roberts. And uh, I sent you all letters about uh, the situation. And I'm just wondering, um, we can't know at this point who the people are who are engaged in conversations about um, what's going on with the um, animal control contract. We can't know who Who's interested? Is that true? That is the question I had to defer to either Mr. Desiderio or to Ms. Davenport. Oh, we go ahead, Mr. Desiderio. What's this, what's the status? We're 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 collecting we're collecting resumes. Or, uh, it's, not, it's not resumes. We are discussion in discussions with multiple entities that provide this kind of service. Some of them are other municipalities, and some of them are, you know, other organizations. So I personally don't have any problem if if uh, Miss Davenport would like to talk about or say what who we're talking to. But uh, the negotiations and discussions are very fluid, so I don't think any of the uh, the specifics would do anyone any good at this point. Um, well, as you probably know from having read the letters, we've been doing a lot of uh, research on our own. And uh, it's clear that Montclair has a lot of animal control officers. And it just seems to me that Maplewood should have at least one. Um, and I think that that should be a person who's hired directly by Maplewood Township itself rather than uh, be, be shared with another uh, municipality. That's just my, my point of view based on what I know about what goes on in this town with animals. Uh, on our Facebook page, we, in the past week, we had a dog missing, a cat missing. On next door, there was a cat missing. I don't know what goes on on Facebook, but it, I'm sure that there's enough work for a Maplewood dedicated um, animal control officer. And I, you know, my group would love to see that. I and see that point. And there very well may be that in the future. The direction I asked Ms. Davenport to head into was uh, we got caught off guard, as did everyone else, with uh, St. Hubert's, you know, drop, you know, dropping all the, uh, the municipalities. So we're looking at this right now as a one-year plan to just get something in place. For us to go ahead and hire an officer, an animal control officer right now and put the necessary infrastructure in place uh, in the next uh, three weeks is kind of a tall order. So we want to make sure that we have something that's uh, that was workable in place for 2023 while examining all the options. And again, that option could very well be hiring our own animal control officer. But right now we're looking to get, to, to, to get something in place on January 1. I just want to make one more point, and that is that the North Branch uh, Division of St. Hubert's has a host of animal control officers, all of which are going to be out of jobs come January. You know, good, experienced people who could do, who I'm sure, you know, you bring them in for an interview and they could do the job. They, they could hit the ground running. They, they, they already know the town. Right, and we appreciate your thoughts and comments. And as the administrator said, we'll put under, uh, under uh, you know, review. Obviously, when you're asking to hire someone, there comes benefits and other factors as well. But I, I wanna go I ahead. Yeah, so, but I do appreciate your time. We need to move on, but okay. thank you for your words. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank yes. you. Mr. Waltz, who's next, please? Next, we have Claire Roberts. We'll convert you to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Ms. Roberts? I'm I'm unmuting and I'm trying to turn on the camera, but um, you know what? The camera doesn't wanna cooperate. So I will just go ahead uh, 
with my voice. Anyway, um, and I, I do want to thank Ms. Davenport very much for all the work and, and everyone else who's putting into this. I mean, I know we do understand, um, you know, what short notice you've had. However, um, the December 20th meeting, um, there is only 10 days from December 20th to December 31st. If Ms. Davenport can share at this point, who has made final proposals, we would really appreciate that information. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. We'll take that under consideration. Mr. Wallace, anyone else like to address the township at this time or the Board of Health, excuse me? Uh, yes, Mr. McGeehee, uh, it was just converted to a panelist, so I lost the name. It is an email address though, so I do not have a first and last name for you, but we're converting them to a panelist right now. Thank you. It's Ms. Gilman, Leslie Gilman. Ms. Gilman, we yield the floor yes. to you. Hi, everyone. Can you see me now? Okay. Yes, we can. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, so again, I am also a member of uh, Soma for Animals and have been following this uh, very closely. I am hoping that, um, I know Ms. Davenport has been working very hard with South Orange as well as Maplewood, and I'm hoping that whatever solution comes is in place for Maplewood will be uh, shared with uh, South Orange because we know that there's a very short window to get something out there. Um, and I am going to again uh, make um, the statement that I am hoping that fervently that the solution you will not choose is to go with animal control solutions, which is a private um, animal control uh, uh, company. Um, and we uh, sent a letter why we are uh, against uh, ACS. Um, and there are you know, the many reasons there. Um, they come in with a very low offer, but then they, at the end, they uh, start tacking on additional charges for each animal that they handle. So um, actually you end up spending a lot more of the taxpayer's money with them. They are extremely out of town. They are very, um, they're not transparent. We don't know where the animals go um, once their seven day hold is up. Um, and they have also not been uh, forthcoming when we've contacted them on numerous occasions for information and just basic kind of questions we're asking. So um, we're hoping that that is not the, the, the path that uh, Maplewood and South Orange will choose. We just don't think that they are in the best interest of our community. Or 30 seconds. Animals. I'm done. Ms. Gilman, thank you again. We'll definitely take your comments under consideration. So thank Thanks, you. Frank. You're welcome, good to see you. Nice All see right, you. Um, Mr. Walls, anyone else like to adjust the Board of Health at this time? I see no one, Mr. McGeehee. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. We will now close the uh, public hearing or uh, participation for the Board of Health, and I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Seconded. Awesome. Ms. Craig? Please call the roll. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. I will now yield the floor back to the mayor. Thank you, Chairman McGeehee, for another informative Board of Health meeting. And thank you to our health officer, uh, Candace Davenport, for her presentation this evening. So we're moving over to ordinances. We have one ordinance on final passage this evening, ordinance number 3075-22. Ms. Fritzen? Uh, yes, Mayor, it's uh, item number seven. Ordinance number 3075-22 is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2891-18. This ordinance will further permit the registration of defaulted, abandoned, and vacant properties in the township of Maplewood. At this time, uh, I'm gonna open it up to a public hearing since this is um, second pass through on final passage. Are there members of the public who wish to comment on this ordinance? Mr. Waltz. I see no one there. Thank you, Mr. Waltz. We'll close the public hearing. Are there members of the Township Committee who wish to make a comment about this ordinance? Seeing none, 
Uh, can I get a motion? My pleasure, Mayor. Uh, I move the ordinance. I move this ordinance by adoption as a whole, and the clerk to be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. I second the motion. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor Daphnis? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. And you have several items coming up as introductions of new orders. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mayor. We have a series of seven ordinances on introduction. And the first one will be item number eight. Introduction of new ordinance, ordinance number 3076. There's 22. And that is an ordinance to establish the fees for the Jitney Pass commuter parking, the Jitney parking combination pass, and Jitney daily fee uh, pass beginning in 2023. This ordinance will increase the Jitney Pass fee from $125 to $150. The consumer, the commuter, parking fee from 275 to 330, the Jitney parking combo fee from 300 to 360, and the daily user fee from $2 to $3 per ride beginning in 2023. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. We did uh, have this on for discussion at the last township committee meeting, uh, providing opportunity for public comment. And there will be ample opportunity provided it passes and first pass this evening for the public to comment again on the 20th when we meet for the final time this year. At this point, I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law in Maplewood South Orange news record, and a hearing to be held on December 20th, 2022. I'll second the motion there. Sat, Ms. Cripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Okay, next, ordinance number 3077-22, also an introduction, Mayor. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood, entitled Zoning and Development Regulations. This ordinance will, with regard to zoning districts R17, R15, R14, amend the facade length adjacent to side lot lines from 30 feet to 40 feet in each zone. Thank you, Ms. Fritz. And again, we discussed this at our last public session. Uh, last month, and this came to us as a recommendation from our buildings department, uh, and it was discussed as well by the code committee, and at this point, I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading in publication, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on December 20th, 2022. I'll second the motion here. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca, my apologies, sir. You were supposed to move that, and I got a little caught up there. I will be quiet. Ms. Fritzen? <laughs> yes, Mayor. Next uh, ordinance and introduction, 3078-22, is an ordinance to amend Chapter 127 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Zoning and Development Regulations. This ordinance will increase the fee for on-site inspections of non-life hazard use for buildings, businesses, and occupancies for the M2 code from $60 to $120. Ms. Fritzen, I'll move this uh, with this. I move the pass to this ordinance on first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on December 20th. Second it. Scribe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Okay, next on introduction, we're to uh, 8D now. Ordinance number 3079-22 is an ordinance to amend chapter 319 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Nuisances in uh, Public Health. This ordinance will add language, making it illegal for the harboring of and accessibility of feed to mice and rodents. 
Ms. Fritz and I'll move this as well. Uh, I move the pass of this ordinance on first reading. Is publication according to law of the South Orange Maple South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on December 20th. Second. Second. Ms. Scrape? Oh. Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Next, uh, 8E, which is also an introduction. Mayor, it's Ordinance 3080 22 is an ordinance to amend chapter 209 of the code of the township of Maplewood entitled residential rental properties. This ordinance will add a requirement that landlords provide hot water to tenants at certain times. Ms. Fritz and I will proudly move this, the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing also to be held on December 20th. I'll second it. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mr. Luca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Okay, 8F, uh, also an introduction. Mayor, it's uh, ordinance number 3081-22. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 305 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Food Establishments. This ordinance will adopt New Jersey Administrative Code 824 regarding sanitation and retail food establishments and food and vending machines. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. I'll move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on December 20th. Seconded. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Okay, and uh, item 8G, also an introduction. Mayor, it's ordinance number 3082-22, is an ordinance to amend chapter 276 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood, entitled General Provisions for the Health. This ordinance will revise certain language with regard to the incorporation of sections of the Maplewood Code into the Code of the Board of Health. Ms. Fritzen, I'll move the pass to this ordinance on its first reading. Is publication according to law in the South Orange, Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held also on December 20th. Second. Mr. Croyd? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. That concludes the seven ordinances on introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. As I said, that's a lot tonight, right? Okay, moving on to item number 10 in our agenda, Essex County Community Block Grant, CDBG Program Public Hearing uh, regarding the purchase of an ADA compliant bus for Maplewood Senior Services. Do we have Community Services Director De Palma with us? Hi, good evening, members of the Township Committee, Mr. Desiderio, Mr. Schuster, Ms. Barnett. I'm Annette De Palma, the Director of Community Development. Uh, this is a public hearing on a community development block grant application in which the township is applying for a senior, uh, a bus for seniors that's ADA compliant. Um, HUD appropriated this year $5.2 million to Essex County first through the community development block grant. Uh, unlike prior years where we've applied for capital projects, this year we're applying for a service project, and the uh, distinction is somewhat significant. So of the uh, whatever monies are appropriated by HUD, uh, the county can only use 15% 15, 15 for service projects. Um, our application for a senior bus falls within that category. That means whereas, you know, we could typically rely on somewhere between, you know, $175,000, $205,000 uh, as a straight up capital project, the, um, the amount that we would be awarded is something of a wild card. And it's not something of a wild card, completely a wild card, because it's contingent on the applicant pool which includes you know, non-governmental organizations, all kinds of service agencies, and also municipalities that are applying for funds for service grants. 
All that said, um, I'm putting this out to you because the the application also requires that um, the applicant certify that the funds being sought are or will be in the capital budget for the grant year. Okay. Um, so as a result, I have two applications going. I have one application in progress for a diesel bus. I have one application going for an electric bus. Uh, the, the difference is cost, at least upfront cost. Uh, I wish I could tell you what the reduction of maintenance costs are on an electric vehicle. I mean, they're, they're pretty substantial but I don't have enough information. I'm certainly not an expert in uh, electric vehicles or vehicles of any kind, so I can't put out anything that you could rely on. Um, a diesel bus would cost about $225,000, maybe a little bit more um, by the time they're specced out and ordered. Uh, an electric vehicle would be about 466000 uh, I inquired about whether there, with our township engineer, Mr. Kittner, about whether there were hybrids available, and there were, but they're not really uh, on the market much because they're too problematic. So, uh, I need to know, basically, uh, you know, which direction the governing body would like me to proceed in. Now, let me add something else. Um, a few other things, actually. The county loves this project. They absolutely love that we're applying for a vehicle that will be dedicated for our senior population. You know, it's consistent with, you know, at, at, at all of the policies of the county. Um, it's consistent with our age in place initiatives. Uh, and further, they love the idea also that we are applying for uh, an electric vehicle, which is also consistent with the you know county and Maplewood sustainability practices. So the numbers you're citing us for the cost, what size bus is that? How many passengers? So the diesel, the specs for the diesel that I have are about uh, 34 to 36 passengers. The, the diesel vehicle, um, we would have to take three seats out since it's not specced out for uh, ADA accessibility to add a lift. Um, that costs somewhere between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars, and apparently it's something that is done as a matter of course. So we're talking, you know, somewhere between thirty-two and thirty-six uh, occupants. The electric bus holds many more; it holds eighty-one people. Um, the range on the electric bus one hundred thirty-eight miles. Eighty-one people. It can't yeah. be eighty-one people. Yeah, that's what the spec says. No. Is it a full size bus or is it a no, smaller bus? The, what I got from the township engineer was the specs for a full size bus. That's what I got. So now I, you know, I would like to add something else too, and that's the, you know, this market changes a lot. Uh, again, I, I, you know, I know very little about you know commercial vehicles or vehicles of this kind. So, you know. I think the question at this point is not, are you voting on a particular kind of vehicle, but not a particular kind, a, a particular vehicle, but which direction you want to go in? Do you want to do a standard diesel or do you want to do an electric vehicle? Well, um, I, I, I want to disagree with you. I, I agree we have to decide diesel or electric, but... Um, First of all, I, I can't believe 81 is the right number. It's no, it would have to be a, a dual bus. Um, I would go with the, with the electric. But I, I think we need to have a sharper analysis as to what size bus we need and what we will be using this bus for. A lot of this is for demand response transportation. Somebody calls up, they have to go to the doctor. Or we're taking 15, 20 people to, um, 
to the sh to stop and shop or so or to the mall or something like that. On our trips to the shore and things like that, we're probably still going to rent out a bus that has a bathroom in it and things like that because of the distance. So, uh, you know, I I don't I don't know who's making these decisions whether it should be a full size bus or a half size bus, and it does matter because you have cost. So I would say we should pursue a, a dedicated bus for seniors. It should be elected electric, but we should continue to have the conversation about what is the right size bus that we need. Yeah, and if they make a smaller version of that bus, to, to Vic's point, um, what you'd given us as far as numbers, it's twice the number of passengers than the diesel bus. So that in itself, hopefully, would cut the cost down. If the buses can come in a smaller size, hopefully the price tag will be a lot smaller too. Um, my question would be, um, have you spoken to any other municipalities or organizations that may have had one or other of these vehicles to see what the consistency and usage as well as, I know you said you don't have much on the maintenance, but they have, if there's somebody that's using them, they've had to have some maintenance. What kind of feedback have you gotten from other places that are using the same vehicle or similar vehicles? Uh, I have not. I've not reached out to other municipalities who have them. So, you know, as I said, the specs are uh, the specs are what I got from our engineering department. Um, and uh, the other thing that I was going to add before Mr. DeLuca's question was that um, I did also ask the county, you know, in terms of uh, offsetting some some of these costs. And since the build out period is probably at least 12 months, uh, whether we could apply for funding for this this year and then apply for additional funding for it for project year 2024. And they seemed receptive to that. You know, I don't see why we could not do that. But yeah, the, the full-size bus. And, you know, I spoke to the uh, director of senior services a couple of times and um you know your characterization mr deluca is is right i mean the bus is used for uh local local stuff from about 9 15 until about 1 30 or so in the afternoon but she did and also as you pointed out when there are other trips they need to hire a bus that have some facilities on them but if they do a quick trip, for example, that's an hour away down the shore, they could use a vehicle like this. Ironically, a short vehicle into the city, which could take, you know, two hours one way, um, we would have to rent a bus for. But to go to, let's say, Asbury Park, a vehicle like this would do fine. So. Okay. No one has reached out to South Orange for any information they do have a senior bus yeah uh, no i um i actually i have a call into uh acting ba uh doran uh, i'll probably be speaking to her later terrific and i think that uh i'm not really sure why we're not sharing that bus if if, it, if that's possible certainly pre-pandemic we had engaged in those discussions and through our senior advisory committee and through our two towns for all ages healthy initiative Soma Two Towns, uh, we started looking at uh, places that our seniors wanted to go if we were to do a loop that uh, went from one town to the other uh, during certain parts of the day and shopping on, on alternate dates or whatever worked out. So we were actually you know, pretty close to making that happen. And then, of course, we all went into isolation. So, so I think it's important to have some of that information. Um, I drive an electric car, so I would definitely uh, be a, a, a huge proponent for an electric vehicle, an electric bus. But, you know, also uh, being that this has to be part of the capital budget and we're talking about taxpayer money in this fiscal environment, I'm also a little bit uncomfortable uh, with that cost unless we bifurcate this as you uh, offered as an alternate uh, suggestion. Mr. Palma. So that's where I stand. But I think we need more information. I'd like to hear from the rest of our colleagues here, Ms. Kripe and Mr. McGeehee, before we open it up to the public for their input. 
I think Ms. Kripe spoke earlier, but I'll yield to her. Ms. Kripe, anything more you wanted to add? No, I would like to get more details from other places that have used it, really. Well, Ms. Kripe, what, what details would you like? You want maintenance, you know, approximations? What What is it that you're looking for? Approximations, also verifying that number, because I'm kind of with Vic, that's a big bus um, uh, for our numbers. But if there's a smaller one, will that cost go down? I mean, if we only need a bus that seats 35 or 40 people, um, will that still be $400,000 for an e-vehicle or will it be 300? Yeah. Mr. McGee? Yeah, I think every, I think the it's been exhausted. I think my colleagues, including you are spot on. More information in electric is the direction. Right. Okay, uh, Mr. Palma, when is this due? Um, I think it's due December 31st. So we're having a second public hearing at the December 20th meeting. And the way, you know, the way these grants come out is it was announced, they're always this time of year. Um, it's announced November 1st. The application is available between the second and third week of November. And then you got 10 days to do the notice of public hearing. Um, so we're always kind of stuck, jammed into, into uh, December. But that, you know, it's it's the way HUD appropriates the money and the way the county can uh, get it together to disperse it. So process it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I do the same thing at DCA. I have a couple of big grants I'm about to drop and they're going to be due at the end of the month, right around the big holiday. So that's just how it works, unfortunately, with grants. Okay, let's open it up to the public and hear from them. Mr. Waltz. Hey, first up, we have uh, Joan Crystal, the virtual panelist, like three minutes to speak. Ms. Crystal, you're muted. Am I muted now? No, we can hear you. Welcome. Nope. Okay, thank you. Uh, obviously, I'm very much in favor of the proposal for having an ADA compliant vehicle. It's something that's sorely needed and that we've needed for many years because one of the main functions of the senior transportation program is to transport seniors who have difficulty getting around any other way. This includes seniors who have mobility challenges and other disabilities that make it difficult for them to use the existing senior transportation vehicles that we have. I do use the senior transportation regularly and I have seen situations where the driver has had to physically push a passenger onto the bus I've seen situations where even with a driver trying, the passenger cannot get onto the bus. This seems to defeat the aim of the program. And I strongly urge the town to go through with a proposal and the purchase of a vehicle that is ADA compliant. I can't imagine any situation where we would need an 81 seat vehicle for senior transportation. Even the 40 seat vehicle does not tend to be filled. On average, we tend to use a 30 seat vehicle with 28 passengers and that seems to meet our needs very well. Thank you, Ms. Crystal. Mr. Waltz, are there other members of the public who wish to comment? I see no one there. Okay, seeing no one or hearing from no one else, we will close the public comment hearing. And there will be another hearing on this issue uh, at our last meeting for the year on December 20th. And by then we'll have more details and we can move this forward. Thank you, uh, Ms. Palma. Mr. Palma, do you have any final thoughts on your end? I do not. Thank you for your presentation and your guidance. Okay, we're gonna move over to report from departments. There is one published report where we are in the budget as of November, 2022, that was made available to the public when we published the agenda. Uh, administrative reports, let's begin with interim administrator Schuster. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a few things to report on. Uh, first of all, uh, just to talk about the budget report, um, a lot of my time these days are being spent on the 2023 budget. Uh, we do have a, a draft budget, which will be uh, ready uh, within a day or two. Uh, we're still waiting for a few capital items uh, to come in from uh, some department heads, uh, but for the most part, we have all the information we need. Uh, we are proceeding along the uh, uh, proposed schedule that I had sent out to the entire township committee. Uh, we're now going to all the subcommittees and giving reports out on the budgets and capital items uh, that are in there. Uh, as we continue that process and receive feedback, uh, I'll be making my recommendations on the budget based on the feedback received from those subcommittees, uh, as well as what I'm seeing in our operations and capital needs. Uh, the other items I've been working on, uh, we already talked uh, earlier this evening about animal control. Uh, the uh, health officer Davenport has been doing a phenomenal job in trying to quickly put together a good solution. I really believe at the end of the day, we are going to have a good solution. Uh, as I said, though, I am looking at this as a one-year solution just for us to go ahead and get through next year, reevaluate, and then make a decision on what the uh, the future is going to hold. Um on your agenda coming up, uh, you will be on the consent agenda. You will be voting on an agreement uh, to uh, bring on board a recruiter for the next administrator so that you can kick me out of here as quickly as possible. Um, uh, so of course, I'd like to stay, but uh, with the nature of this job, I know I'll be leaving. Uh, I'll be working with them as as much as possible to support their needs, uh, get advertisements out there, and begin the interviewing process and support whatever uh, you need to go ahead and fill this role. Uh, and the last item, uh, as you also on the agenda for this evening, is the corrective action plan associated with the past year's audit. Uh, that is something I'll be working with with all department heads uh, to make sure that we complete the, as many of those 33 items as we possibly can uh, to make sure that they don't appear in the next audit. Uh, so that's all I have for this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions from anyone? Okay, thank you, Mr. Schuster. You rascal, we're not kicking you out of here. We want you to stay as long as you can stay, but you only could do interim, so so there you go. Thank okay. you. Uh, Assistant Administrator Barnett, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. So just a few quick things. As Interim Administrator Schuster mentioned, we've been working a good amount of time on the budget and that first draft is about ready to go out. We also had a new employee start last week. Her name is Amy Stewart. She is our Soma Two Towns coordinator for the Maplewood side. So we've been taking her around, getting her introduced to folks and meeting with some of her, our respective counterparts on the South Orange side to start collaborating. And she'll be on the Soma Two Towns management committee meeting tomorrow. So if anybody sees a new face around, um, that is likely Amy. I will try to introduce her to as many of you as possible and feel free to stop in and say hi to her at the senior center for any of our senior residents. Uh, something else that we've been working on is recycling communications. I know many residents, if not everyone at this point has received a postcard about the forthcoming recycling changes that will take effect starting Monday, January 2nd. Um, in addition to the postcard, we also sent out a press release through the paper. We have some information sent out via eblast. We of course have information on our recycling website. And then we do have a planned flyer with greater detail that will be sent out to residents as well as flyers posted around town. And then something that I've been working with our communications committee on is getting SMS messaging set up in time for the new year so that we can send out reminder text messages outside of our Nixle system. This will be through a separate sign up so that folks are aware of the recycling schedule. Um, on top, or in addition to that, something else that we're uh, working on is the community services director, uh, or rather department head, Melissa Mancuso and I have been working to schedule uh, division of arts and culture manager interviews. And we'll be speaking with some finalists next week and hoping to have a decision on that to move forward shortly. And then last but not least, for anybody who is interested in working with the township, we have several great openings um, currently in place. And one is a new position of fire official, and the other two are actually for individuals who were promoted internally. So are still with the township and sharing their wisdom, but just not in those capacities. One is 
um, an assistant role to the director and superintendent of the Department of Public Works, and one is a confidential secretary for captains of police. So if anyone's interested in applying, we have all of those listed on our website as well as on the League of Municipalities and on Indeed. So please send in an application if you are interested. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions for Assistant Administrator Barnett? Assistant Administrator Barnett, thank you so much. Getting it all done. There's a lot going on, right? Moving right along. And I'm very excited about our new uh, coordinator for Soma Two Towns on the Maplewood side. Um, our new coordinator comes uh, highly recommended and highly regarded in the area of senior and older adult care, formerly with Sage Elder Care. So we're really, really excited. Um, to onboard her and to work with her. Okay, thank you very much. Moving over to legal, Township Attorney Desiderio. Mayor, I have no report this evening. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Desiderio? Okay, moving on to our Madam Clerk, Ms. Fritzin. Uh, thank you. Just uh, to go over, I appreciate the Township Committee agreeing upon our start time for the annual reorganization meeting, which is Sunday, January 1st. And uh, it's a remote meeting starting at 2 p.m. And again, I'll be making arrangements with uh, the newest uh, soon to be member of the Township Committee for an in-person swearing, uh, probably one hour before here at Town Hall, which uh, I've been doing the last several years. Um, so your upcoming meetings uh, for the Township Committee, our, our main meetings are December 20th, January 1st, and also uh, January 3rd. Um, I've been able to get the, uh, a bunch of the meeting notices out. Uh, by law, we must do that for, uh, you know, Township Committee, uh, Board of Health, um, Board of Adjustment Planning Board. Um, so they're all, you know, in the process of being published. And, uh, we're finally caught up on event planning meetings and it was really tough getting there, but uh, we had quite a few last week and the week before, and I appreciate those of you that attended them. And uh, there's just so many things going on for events, but we got them covered. We even got a 5K race covered that I believe is the uh, first week in January. And we had the Maple Woodstock uh, wrap up meeting, Ms. Cripe, right? Finally. Uh, which went very well. So uh, yeah, a lot of uh, things going on in the clerk's office. Uh, obviously we have to wait until at least uh, the morning of December 21st to begin uh, Jitney parking combo sales, but it's okay because you know we have the one month grace period for anyone that has a 2022 permit or Jitney carries over for roughly three to four weeks. So I think, um, you know, the ridership and the public will be well served. And that's all that I have. Any questions, let me know. Thank you, Ms. Ritson. Any questions for our clerk, my colleagues? Okay, seeing none, we will move over to reports from elected officials and we'll begin with committee member McGee. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just really quick, I just wanna recognize again uh, the work that Ms. Barnett is doing on behalf of the communications a committee as articulated. We're trying to uh, branch out and leverage uh, incremental channels uh, that we have not done traditionally uh, in terms of text messaging, SMS text uh, messaging. So we'll get to that soon. Uh, Ms. Barnett shared some metrics with me uh, earlier this uh, month, uh, which I appreciate uh, showing the success of our current strategy with communication with an emphasis on our emails. And it is uh, positive. Uh, we've seen a percentage of about 2% of new subscribers consisting on average over the last couple of months. Uh, we have nearly 5,500 subscribers now to our communications, uh, uh, which is pretty good uh, when you think about households. Uh, obviously, we're going to continue to try to grow that number as we really want to, again, as we talked about at the beginning of this year, is focus on leveraging communication from the township and getting, you know, and, and, and leveraging other channels uh, equally, but not primarily, and I'm referring to obviously social media and, and Facebook. So uh, we are in that strategy. We're moving forward effectively uh, and we'll continue to send anywhere between 10 to 12 bulletins, uh, you know, a, a month 
uh, obviously with information that's relevant to the town. And as Ms. Barnett also communicated with uh, some of our changes coming uh, with the, the leaf blow reg uh, regulation, as well as our recycling program, I think it's uber critical for the press out there to communicate to our public to quickly sign up and subscribe to our to our newsletters and communications. Thanks, that's it for me, I yield the floor. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McGeehee. Deputy Mayor DeLuca. Thanks, Mayor. I have just one item uh, tonight on our consent agenda. We have uh, resolution 359-22, which is to do sand silting, drainage and field amendments at DeHart Park. It's part of our effort to address uh, the problem at DeHart. This is something we're gonna be doing before the end of the year. We'll be putting the blankets on and we believe that this will uh, help. This is a $70,000 contract to grinding services. And that's all I have. Thank you, Deputy Mayor DeLuca. Committee Member Craig. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the pool committee met and we went over the numbers. Thank you, uh, CFO Joe, for coming out and explaining a lot of things to us. And we're still getting receipts in for a few more things that need to be taken care of. But as of the um, that meeting on the 29th, we actually ended up almost in the black for the first time in a very long time for pool. The memberships, the passes, the um, even with the days that we gave for residents to come during the heat advisories, um, we still didn't max out. And we also ended up not having to carry too much more. But unfortunately, next year's not going to be that way it is. And so we're hoping that people who are interested in joining the pool, please do come out. Please do join the pool. If you have questions, reach out to any and every one of us so that we can answer them as best we can in hopes that you'll be able to become a part of that part of the community. Um, the Maplewood Stop Wrap-Up meeting, as Ms. Fritzen mentioned, um, went very, very well. There were a lot of great ideas, a lot of good feedback from everyone. Um, plans being put in place, suggestions that were given from the community have been taken to heart, and the committee itself will be working to draft a new plan and lay out new design to make next year's Maple Woodstock even better. Um, dates haven't been announced yet, but they will soon. And finally, Rec Advisory wanted me to share that the uh, Winter art classes with Sandra Charlap are up and are open and encourage all folks to come out, including professional artists. She's actually offering a professional artist class at the Hart Park on Saturday for those people who maybe are more talented or more skilled artists to come on out. Um, the recent acrylic class show emergence over at 1978, um, the gallery was a huge success. So I wanna thank all of the contributors to that all the attendees who came out and supported the artists. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't go, but I heard a lot of great things and I sent a lot of people over there. So I feel good that if I couldn't be there, at least three or four of my neighbors went on my behalf. Um, so um, other than that, um, that I, I yield the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Craig. That's great. I, I love to hear about the pool being in the black for a change, not in the red, but um, as you know, Ms. Craig, um, we still have to have that conversation and you know we'll start that conversation again in January, January about one. making the pool more accessible. One of the things that comes up a lot over and over again in the public engagement sessions that we have been doing uh, as we look to adopt a new master plan in the new year um, has been the, the issue of the lack of equity at the pool, the lack of access, making it more affordable, day passes, swimming lessons, you know, and so on and so forth. So I do think we have um, a conversation to make, continue a conversation with the community and, and some important policy decisions the governing body has to make in the new year uh, with respect to the pool. And I'm also really heartened to hear that some of our residents are leading the way in this regard in looking at, as reported at the last public session, uh, whether you know there should be a supportive foundation or a friends of to help the pool. And I understand that other incredible advocates out there are also looking at how we um, can support those who can't afford to uh, take a, a to benefit from our camps, making our camps more affordable as well. So these are important policy decisions to make in the new year. Uh, we have to walk our talk of equity. We really do. All right, wonderful. So my report, a couple things. The Finance Committee met, I think it was last week. Um, and I would say at this point that we are cautiously optimistic 
about the budget in 2023 being uh, a bit better than it has been the past couple of years uh, with uh, a, a lessened burden on taxpayers than uh, they experienced in the past couple of years anyway. Uh, we are retiring some debt. Uh, our FEMA and IDA reimbursements have come in. Uh, our cannabis revenue is uh, way above projections and expectations thus far. Uh, and we have some revenue that has come in because we are back, right, in terms of offering uh, incredible events and, and services uh, to the community. And the community is excited to, uh, to participate in those. So cautiously optimistic is how it looks right now. And as our interim administrator uh, reported, our 2021 audit is complete. Some items were identified as necessary. Uh, corrections that need to be made, none of them affect our rating, our ability to borrow money or anything like that. They are some minor uh, corrective actions that need to be taken to tighten some of our controls and our processes on the fiscal side and a corrective action has already uh, is in place to, to address those audit issues that were identified rather. Tis the season to be jolly. Uh, we, we had our first Christmas lighting uh, Dickens Village and Maplewood Village this Saturday. Despite the rain, we did it. We, we just about got it done before the rain started. It was a lot of fun. Um, and please, please join us on Saturday this weekend, starting at 4 p.m. Uh, at the gazebo for the tree lighting there. Lots of fun and music and goodies for the kids and for the adults. Uh, see you there, hope you join us. Uh, also on Saturday, the winter market returns to Yale Corner starting at noon. We're very excited about that um, and grateful to our Springfield Avenue Village coordinator, uh, Springfield Avenue Partnership, excuse me, I, I put the two businesses just together there. Uh, Springfield Avenue Partnership uh, Manager for coordinating that effort. And we look forward to seeing you all out there. Come out and support our, our businesses. Please shop local. Um, you know, it's not just about the vendors, the outside vendors that show up at Yale Corner. Those important vendors are important as well. But please, please come out. Uh, and support our local businesses. They're open and they're welcoming us with open arms and they need our support. Um, and then finally, St. Joe's is, is doing a food drive, St. Joe's Pantry uh, in the Hilton neighborhood on Saturday as well. Saturday is gonna be very busy uh, starting between nine and 12. Uh, and we posted some information about that the uh, the common non-perishable items is what we're seeking. Um, and that food drive is always very, very successful. So if you have some non-perishable items, if you're in a giving spirit, please uh, stop on by and drop off some items between nine and noon uh, at St. Joe's on Saturday. And as committee member McGee mentioned, check your email, Subscribe to our township emails, check your mail. We will be sending out a lot of information about two very important big changes in the township starting in January. The first being our recycling is gonna be changing. And the second being the, uh, the all year ban on gas powered leaf blowers. Okay, discussion items. We have one quick item here, 15 minute parking spots in the village. What do, what do I mean by that? Uh, as you all know, we uh, put in 15 minute pickup spots for our businesses, our merchants and our restaurants in the village um, during the pandemic. Uh, that was an important uh, thing that we put into place along with the outdoor dining. We have heard, we have surveyed our restaurants and our merchants, and they have told us that they don't need them anymore. So uh, we can take them out uh, and open up a little bit more parking. Uh, and so I checked in with township attorney, Mr. Desiderio, to see how we should go about doing that. And he suggested that we uh, have a discussion here, make sure all the members of the governing body are in favor of that before uh, we move this forward. Any discussion? In favor. 
in totally favor. in favor. Mr. Desiderio, what do we need to do? I think we just need to do a motion, Mayor. I move that we um, eliminate the 15 minute uh, pickup parking spots in Maplewood Village. I'll okay. second. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank you all. That was easy. And consent agenda items 14A through 14Q. Who's going to move it? Move it. Second. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Yes. Hot damn, I missed one. Item 14Q, resolution number 361-22. I'm going to move the adoption of resolution number 361-22. Second. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Okay. This brings us to our second public comment period for any subject matter. Mr. Waltz. Good evening again, Mayor and Township Committee. We'll now begin the second public comment portion of our meeting on any subject matter. If any meeting attendee would like to address the Township Committee, please use the raise your hand function. We'll convert you over to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Would anybody like to address the Township Committee at this time? I see no one, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Waltz. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I move that we adjourn and meet again on December 20th, same channel, 7.30 p.m., same time. Second. Ms. Craig. Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor Daphnis?